Hello everyone, this is Daniel Stigman, and today I will be doing another Katane module tutorial on the Pokemon Sprite Cipher by Timwi, another module in the list of data compression ciphers. This module does not require any edge work, much like some of its predecessors. So without further ado, let's get started. In reality, all you do is pushing the same buttons you can use. Nothing has changed. This is how the module looks. It is a white-looking cipher module with two pages, as per usual. A standard keyboard, which you can type on by clicking the keyboard, or by typing on your actual keyboard. Two arrow keys to alternate the displays, and a submit button. And this here is how the manual looks. A rather straightforward five-step process with some binary and uh, alphabet uh, below in a pixel font. The goal to solve in this module is to take these letters as one concatenation and convert them to binary and then run that string of binary through a series of steps to eventually get a bitmap that will give you your decrypted word. As I stated earlier, there is no edge work needed for this module, so all the diffuser has to do is just read off this display, all these four displays, these three screens on page one, and then this screen on page two as one string, and then the expert will write it down as such. So let's just do that. Whiskey, Golf, Uniform, Oscar, Bravo, India, India, Mike, Charlie, Kilo, Bravo, Lima, Papa, Echo, Kilo, Quebec, and the second page, Zulu, X-Ray, Bravo, Quebec, Echo. The diffuser's job is done here for now. We don't need the module on our screens anymore. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is convert these letters individually to binary and then concatenate it as all one string. So let's do that. Using this table here, we're going to convert each one of these letters to binary. So, whiskey will be 1100. Golf is 00110. Uniform is 1010. Oscar is 01110. Bravo is 00001. India is 01000. And once again, another India is 01000. Mike is 01100. Charlie is 00010. Kilo is 01010. Bravo is 4001. Uh, Lima is 01011. Papa is 0 and 4 ones. Uh, Echo is 00100. Kilo is 01010. Quebec is 10000. Uh, Zulu is 1111. X Ray is 1101. Bravo is 00001, uh, Quebec is 10000, and Echo is 00100. And then we'll join all these strings together. And now we move on to step two, run length encoding decryption. What we're going to do, first of all, is remove this first bit here. Uh, if it is a one bit, then we start off in raw mode. Otherwise, we start off in RLE mode. Afterwards, the two modes will simply alternate. So, with that being said, we remove the first bit, it's a 1, get rid of that from the string, and I'm going to keep track of which mode we're in. So the mode we're currently in, because it's a 1 bit, is raw. So, with raw mode, we need to read pairs of bits until we encounter a 0, 0 pair. For each bit that we come across, it is left intact, but the 0, 0 pair is removed. So let's do just that. These two bits here, we have a one and a zero, so it's left intact. And in here, we have two consecutive zeros as a pair, so we're gonna completely delete those from the string. Now what we do is, uh, because we're done with raw mode, we're now gonna switch to RLE mode. I'm gonna make a new variable here called n equals, and we're gonna let n be the number of one bits from the current position plus one. Note that if the next bit is zero, then n equals one. What this means is from the starting position of our string, we're gonna read consecutive ones from our starting position until we come across a zero 
however many ones we come across, plus one is going to be our n value. In this case, our starting bit is a zero, so n just equals one. Now what we're going to do is form a binary number from the next n bits. So we start from our current position and we take that many bits from our current position. So we have just a zero. Then from the next position after getting that, we need to form another n bits. So that's just another one bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to convert these to decimal. Zero and one. That's just going to stay as is. Um, add them together. So zero plus one is one. And then we're going to add one to this. And then we're going to multiply by two. And this value will give us how many zero bits we need to print. So in this case, we have a four. So we do four zeros. And now we're done with RLE mode, so we switch back to raw mode. So we have a one zero pair, another one zero pair, another, and a zero one pair, and a one one pair, and now we have a zero zero pair. So we get rid of it, and now we move on to RLE mode. We have a uh, zero just as the starting position, so n will equal one again. Uh, we have a zero and a zero. These will add together to make zero, of course. Then uh, we add one to that. And then we multiply by two. And we just print two zeros. Switching back to raw mode, we have zero one. And a zero one. And a zero zero. And move on. Back to RLE mode. We have a zero, so n equals one. Zero and zero add together to make one. We add one to that and... No, no, no. Sorry. Correction, they add together to make zero. What am I thinking? Uh, <laughs> zero plus one is one. Multiply that by two gives us two. And we print two zeros. Going back into raw mode, we have one zero and a zero zero we get rid of. Back to RLE mode, we have a zero. So n still equals one. We take the zero and the one. We add them together. And that makes uh, one. We add one to that gives us two. Multiply it by two gives us four. And then we print that many zeros. We'll switch back to raw mode. Uh, we have a one zero pair. And we have a zero zero pair. Back to RLE mode. We have a zero. So n equals one. Uh, zero plus zero is zero. Add one to that is one. Multiply by two is two. So we get that many zeros. It's back to raw mode. We have a one zero, a zero one, a zero one, and then a zero zero. Get rid of that. Back to RLE mode. Uh, we have a zero here, so n equals one. Uh, zero and zero go together. Uh, they form one, uh, and then, no, no, they form zero, and then we add one to that, we multiply by two, and then that gives us two zeros. Going back to raw mode, we have zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, we get rid of. Back to RLE mode. This time, we have a singular one, uh, and then just zeros after it, so this time, n equals two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these four bits and we're going to split them up and then we're going to convert them to decimal. So this here is just zero and this here is two. And then we're going to add those together, then add one to that, multiply by two, and that tells us to print six zeros. Then we're back to raw mode. Uh, one zero, one zero, one zero, get rid of the zero zero. Back to RLE mode. Uh, we have a zero, so n equals one. So we take these two bits, uh, split them up, add them together, uh, uh, add one to that, multiply by two, and then convert that to zeros. Switch to raw mode, we have one, 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 zero, one, zero, and zero, zero. Get rid of that. And then to RLE mode we go again. Uh, we have a zero here, so n equals one. Uh, we take these two bits, split them up, add them together. Um, 
add one to that, multiply by two, and then convert that to zeros. And then into raw mode we go, we have one zero, and then a zero zero. Back into RLE mode. We have two zeros consecutively. Uh, so n equals one, these, uh, these two will go together. Uh, they will form together to make zero. We add one to that, multiply by two, and that tells us to print two zeros. And then we go back to raw mode, uh, where we have zero, one, and the final zero, zero is omitted. Now, we've, now we're done with that, now we just join it all together into one big string. There we go. We don't need this anymore. And now we move on into uh, step three. What we're going to do is we're going to remove the last bit from the bit sequence that we obtained in step two. Uh, this bit is a one, so we're going to remove that and remember that it's a one. The rest of the bit sequence is a monochrome bitmap whose width and height are prime. If the removed bit is one, the bitmap's width is the larger prime, otherwise it's the smaller one. So remembering that the removed bit is a one, the width of the, uh, of the bitmap will be the larger prime. So this is 87 characters long, which is divisible by both uh, 3 and 29. Uh, so let's confirm that real quick. Let's just do a prime factorization of 87. And that gives us 3 and 29. So with that being said, that means our bitmap will be 29 bits wide and 3 bits tall. So let's take these 29 bits. This is going to give me, uh, this is going to take me a while. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 12, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 29, and form uh, sequences of that long. So what we're going to do for each row, we're going to transform them based off of the bits we see. So let's just quickly copy this down. And what we're going to do is we're going to essentially convert these to gray code. First off, the first bit will remain unchanged. And then each subsequent bit must be XORed with the previous bit. And make sure to use the previous bit's new value after it has been transformed. What that means is these bits except the first one, will be transformed based off of their last. So we look at each bit in running succession and compare it with the last and uh, put it through an XOR transformation uh, where, where the output is one if uh, exactly one of the two bits inputted is a one. Uh, if the input was zero, zero, the output would be zero. If the input was one, one, the output would be zero. Otherwise, the output will be uh, one. So first bit is unchanged. Uh, this bit here is a zero, compared with the last as a one. So this becomes a one. This bit becomes a one then. This is a one, one, one. Uh, this becomes a zero. This stays as a zero. Uh, this stays as a one. This becomes a one. Uh, this becomes a zero, 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 uh, one, zero uh, one 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 zero zero one 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 zero 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 and then we do the same for this row uh this uh this zero state this zero stays as zero uh this one stays as one these all become ones um this becomes a zero these stay as zeros this one remains and this becomes a one and this becomes a zero. These are zeros, this stays as one. This becomes a one and this becomes a zero. This stays as zero, this stays as one and this becomes zero. Zero, uh, one, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. And then this zero remains unchanged as does this one. This is a one, one, zero, uh, zero, one, 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 one. Zero one zero one zero zero uh, one 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 uh, zero 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 zero. The solution word may be represented within the final bitmap in any of the following ways. So what we're going to do is we're going to look that look at this bitmap and 
we're going to try and figure out the decrypted word. But the word can be encrypted uh, in any one of these five ways. It can be encrypted as Morse code, pig pen, semaphore, braille, or just regular letters in a, uh, in a four pixel tall font. So let's take a look. Vertical Morse code. Each pixel column is one letter to be read from top to bottom. Uh, in that case, that means our columns should be filled with uh, bits of length one or three. Uh, we have uh, we have a length two here in the second column, so it can't be Morse code. More to the point, it's not tall enough to be Morse code, so we can we can just disregard this one. Pig pen. Each 3x3 three three box of pixels represents a letter written in pig pen cipher. So let's split these up into 3x3s three and let's take a look. If this is to be pig pen, then this, will, this here will represent an opening on the bottom left and the center, the center dot is present and there's walls to, the, to above and right. So this will be bottom left dot, which is a papa. Uh, similarly, this would be uh, walls to the top and left with the dot filled, so this would be bottom right dot, which is a Romeo. Uh, this here uh, is another 3x3. Three three. Uh, the dot is missing and the top left is open, so this is a alpha right here. Uh, this here is the top right opened up with the dot missing, so top right no dot is a Charlie. This here is a sort of diagonal opening where the corners are missing. So this is one of these eight down here. And the opening is on the left with the center dot missing. So this is west with no dot. And this is a tango. Uh, this is bottom right uh, with no dot. So this becomes an India. Uh, this here is uh, top right with... Uh, with no dot, so that's a Charlie. And in this final letter, all walls are surrounded, all walls are engaged, and the zero dot is missing. So this is the center with no dot, and that's an echo. And just like that, we have a word. These zeros are unused, so we don't really need to think about them. They can just disappear. And with that, we have our word, practice, which is what this module will be. Practice makes perfect. Now we go back to our diffuser and tell them, diffuser, input the word practice. Papa Romeo Alpha, Charlie Tango India, Charlie Echo, and enter. This was exactly the way. And that is a solved module. The things were meant to happen. Now I'm going to do another example. However, I'm going to take a few shortcuts and show you a way of doing this module significantly faster. First off, we have X-Ray Romeo Tango, Romeo India Lima, Zulu Tango Hotel, Yankee Foxtrot Echo. A nice small one, 12 letters. Now we convert these letters to binary. We have 1101, uh, Romeo is 10001, uh, Tango is 10011, Romeo is 10001, India is 01000, Lima is 01011. Zulu is 1111, uh, Tango is 10011, Hotel is 00111, Yankee is 1110, Foxtrot is 00101, uh, Echo is 00100. We join all these together and that's step one done. Step two, uh, we're going to remove the first bit. Uh, it is a one bit, so we're starting off in raw mode, which means we're going to create pairs until we come across a zero zero, which is deleted. So we have one zero, one one, and then we have a zero zero pair, which is deleted. Uh, now we're in RLE mode, and we have a zero, so we just take these two bits and add them together, which makes one. Uh, add one to that gives us two, multiply by two is four, so we print four zeros. This will always be the case. If you come across a zero one when you start RLE mode, that tells you immediately you're printing four zeros. And the same goes. If you have four consecutive zeros when coming off of raw mode, all you can do, all you need to do is just delete the first pair and uh, keep the second pair intact and then go back into raw mode as if you seamlessly went through it. 
and I'll demonstrate this uh, later on. It looks like I, uh, I might be able to. So with that being said, this zero on becomes four zeros and then we move on. Uh, one zero, one one, uh, zero one, one one, uh, and this zero zero is removed. Uh, this zero one becomes four zeros, uh, zero one, and then this becomes, uh, this is deleted. These two zeros are left intact because we just, we had four zeros in a row coming out of raw mode. So the first two zeros were removed and then in RLE mode, these two zeros are taken, they're added together, you add one to that and you multiply by two, gives you two. So you just print two zeros, which you already have. So you don't really need to go through the process. You can just sort of leave them intact. So moving on, we have one zero, one one, one one, one one, one zero, zero one, one zero, zero one, one one, one one, one zero, and then get rid of this zero. Uh, now we have uh, now we have a one here. So we take these four bits and then we split them up. Uh, we add them together. Two plus two is four. Add one to that is five. Multiply, we have ten. So we're printing ten zeros. Nine, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we split those up and we just delete the last pair. And then we join all these into one string. Now what we're going to do is remove the last bit, which is a one. So this is wider than it is, uh, than it is tall. Uh, this is made of 55 bits, which is made of two primes, 5 and 11. 11 times 5 is 55. 5 and 11 are both prime numbers. 11 is going to be our width, because our last bit was a 1, so we take the larger of the two primes. So it's an 11 by 5 grid. So let's take a look. We have, uh, let's see, uh, this appears to be 11 bits. Let's just take a look. Yep, that's 11 bits. So we turn this into 5 rows of 11. This is all zeros, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to completely disregard it because in gray code, a string of zeros will just XOR with itself to be just a string of zeros. So we're going to completely disregard it as if it doesn't exist. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, a separate clone here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically reprint this string where I just take uh, the, sum of, uh, the sum of n digits where n is my current position. So to demonstrate this, we have a one, and then this zero uh, tells me that I just basically print whatever my last digit is. And because this is taken modulo two, we're essentially toggling between zero and one. So what I mean by this is this one is gonna remain uh, as is, and then this zero tells me that nothing's being added to it. So my my uh, my my output is still one. What zero x or one is one. So you can see it works. Uh, but one plus zero also modulo two is one. Uh, so we print a one. And now we have one plus zero plus one, which is two modulo two is zero. So now we're printing zeros until we come across the next one, uh, which is right. Uh, hang on, it's right here. Sorry about that. Um, just to reiterate one more time, let me restart that. We have the one, and then uh, we have a zero, so we print ones until we come across the next one, uh, which is right here on the third position. That's a one, so we now print zeros until the next one, which is just next door. And now we print ones until we come across the next one. So these four zeros after this one tell us we need to print four ones. And then this, this one tells us we now need to print zeros until we come across the next one. But that's the end of the string. We now have 11 bits. And we're gonna do the same thing for these strings as well. So we have one, zero, one, 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 uh, and then zero, zero, zero. Uh, once again, we have one, one, and then because we have a string of ones, we're just basically gonna be alternating between zeros and ones. So we have zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. And then we have one zero 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 uh one zero one zero one zero zero now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these bits at the end here uh, let me just make sure this is 11 bits long yep 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 and now we're going to get rid of these here and now let's take a look this can't be vertical morse code because we have four bits in a row here vertically 
which doesn't represent anything in Morse code, so we can disregard that. Uh, could it be pig pen? Uh, three by three boxes? Well, if we try to make three by three boxes, what are we going to do about this last row here? We have bits in it, so it's not a contiguous block. So we can't disregard it. It's got ones in it. Uh, so it can't be pig pen. And the same goes for semaphore. It can't be semaphore because not only do we have to have three by three boxes, much like pig pen, but we also need to have um, the center bit be a one. Well, here, if we made a 3x3 three three here, the center bit would be a 0. Similarly, down here, the center bit would also be a 0. So, it can't be semaphore. And it also can't be braille, because we need a two, a two wide, three tall box. Well, once again, what are we going to do about row 4? So, through logical deduction, we have determined that it has to be in the alphabet, where the message is written in plain English using the below 4 pixel font, where there is no spacing between letters. So it's a 4 pixel tall font, which fits with our, uh, which fits with our, our bitmap. We have a 4 pixel tall bitmap. Uh, so with that being said, let's take a look. So from what I'm gathering, we have a full column. So it could be any one of sort of like, uh, it could be hotel, uh, it could be kilo, uh, it could be Papa. So let's take a look. We have 1010. Zero, zero. That eliminates the possibility of Hotel because Hotel does not have uh, Bravo 1 as a 1. And it also eliminates Kilo. So this right here is a Papa. And now let's take a look. We have 1110. One, one, so this could be uh, Echo. It could be Golf. No, it, co it can't be Golf, sorry. Uh, it could be Lima. Uh, it could be Tango. And that's about it. It could be Echo, Lima, or Tango. Looking at the next bit, uh, we have 1101. One. Uh, it's not Lima, and it's not Tango. Therefore, it is Echo. So let's split that off. Now we have an Echo. Uh, once again, it looks like we have another Echo, but let's verify that. We have 1110, so it could be Echo, Lima, or Tango. And just like that, we have another 1101, just like this. So it's another Echo. And then last but not least, we have 111, so it could be Echo, Lima, or Tango. But this time, we have 0001. So because there's three zeros, it can't be Echo, and it can't be Tango. Therefore, it is Lima. And then this contiguous block of bits, we can just get rid of. It's just padding. And that gives us our final word. Now we're going to input the word into the module. Diffuser, enter the word peel. Papa, echo, echo, lima. Now I'm going to preface something before I submit this. If you make a mistake like this in your typing, all you have to do is just click these arrow keys and you'll go back to... Uh, you'll go back to the display with your keyboard reset. So, going back to what I was doing, diffuser, enter the word peel, papa, echo, echo, lima, and enter. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. Thank you for watching my tutorial on Pokemon Sprite Cypher. I hope I have been informative today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the video. If you like what you see, feel free to leave a like and maybe subscribe for more tutorials. If you need even further help, feel free to join the Retain uh, Discord server, or you can contact me on Discord. I will leave my tag in the description. Thank you for watching. See you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.